Hi and welcome to Dr. Mix. Today I'm going to give you an overview of my studio, a proper studio tour. I've been asked for this many times and uh, today I have time because it's a sunny day, it's a Sunday, and I'm feeling love. <laughs> How you guys doing? Welcome to my studios! I want to give you a really good tour because there's so much to see. In fact, grab some popcorn because today I really want to take my time to explain everything about this studio. By the way, have you subscribed to this channel yet? No? What? What are you waiting for? Do it now! I'll wait. Mm. Yes! Well, Let's start from the beginning. So this is room A. It's the largest of the whole studio. It's very practical. It's designed basically to my specific day-to-day -day needs. This is where I do all of my unboxing. This couch I've got on eBay for nothing. It's a Chesterfield couch. I love it. Right above you can see my red panels. These red panels, I've got them everywhere in the studios. So they're my favorites, they are from GAK Acoustics and they are called Alpha Panels. I really love them. All of the woodwork that you see here has been uh, designed, bespoke. I have actually a very good um, uh, handyman who is a genius with these things. I really like wood, so I tend to go for natural look type of wood. And yes, it's been stained, but uh, you know, I like this theme of sort of wood and red and white and black and, and all of that. So um, up there, my collection of day-to-day -day hats. I've got a lot of them. I've been wearing hats for a long time, since I was about 20. I just love them. On this shelf here, I keep my books. Here I've got some National Geographic, some dance hall. <laughs> Uh, photography book. I, I love photography. I've got Quincy right there. Old videotapes right there. My photos. I'm not a drinker, but I like to have, you know, some drinks around the studio in case I want to celebrate with some client or, or anything like that. This is my favorite collection of 45s when I go out and DJ. Back here, you can see my uh, collection of 45s of when I was a little kid and uh, my tapes from when I was a little kid. I'm not gonna <laughs> open them up. I'm, I think I'm gonna do a, a whole video about that. On that corner, I keep my photography stuff. So here I've got my drone. It's a DJI Mavic Air 2. And I use this especially when I travel and I wanna do like some establishing shots, you know, just to show where I am. This is great for that. It's very portable, it, you know, literally fits almost in my pocket. That's why I like it. You have got the remote for the drone, some bits and bobs. And here is my collection of analog cameras. I love my analog cameras. This is my Hasselblad 500CM. I'm really enthusiastic about this. It looks amazing. Let me see if I can show you how, how great it looks. All right, you ready? Check out, check out. Isn't that amazing? Look, Just anything looks spectacular through this lens. It's incredible. I have a huge passion for cameras. This is my Nikon FM2. I really love this one. It really is fast. It's, you know, it's fantastic. I've got very, very good lens on it. It's a 1.4 aperture, 55 millimeter. Love it. So that's it for my camera corner. But let's get to the meat of the studio. So room A is centered around this PC computer. This, these computers, I, I give them a name so that I know how they're called on the network. So they have all names that have been actually uh, decided by the people who work here. So, new PC, how are we gonna call them? That, how are we gonna call her? That. So that's why this one is called Juliana, and that's how it appears on the network. And of course, I'm running Cubase, I'm running a whole bunch of uh, uh, plugins and everything. Um, oh, before I forget, 
This is my Linksys system that allows me to run the Ethernet connection. I love it. And this is a NAS drive to back up all of the computers. Sorry, I digress. Here's my 1974 Minimog. It's always connected. I want to be able, you know, at any time to uh, just, you know, come up with ideas, record them if I want to. So that's the Minimog. This is the Rhodes. It's a uh, 73. It's got a suitcase, fantastic suitcase. I keep it a little bit up so that basically it has to live on top of the table, between this table and that table. So I needed a little bit of. Uh, height right there and on top of that is my Juno 6 and on top of that is the SH-1000 I just like to have my synthesizer always connected so that if I have an idea you know I can just quickly put it down as we go to this area this is like a giant uh, stand for my laptop more than anything uh, these days but actually you know I keep a lot of the gear here so let me show you what I have on my table right now I am recording the audio using this road link to this microphone right here transmitter right there everything is recorded on the zoom otherwise I usually like this microphone, the reason why I like this microphone is because look at it, see, it's directional. So it points straight to my mouth, which means I can work with the full volume on the speakers and that signal will not come back here. It's very uncomfortable, but uh, this is very practical. So that's the reason why it lives here. All I do is I connect it to that. And uh, if I've got some audio that I want to capture, I get it from the mixer, which acts as a monitor for everything. Right there, I have a TriCaster Mini. Basically what it is, is a multi-track recorder mixer for video. You heard that correctly. A multi-track recorder for video. Basically here, I can feed any HDMI signal. And then this is the control panel, which lives attached to the table like that. Basically what I managed to do is to have multiple cameras. One is this one, one is that one, GoPro, and one is this one, which practically means that at a touch of a button, yeah, I can change whatever I'm watching, you see? So on one, you get the GoPro, that one. On two, you get that camera right there. On three, you get that camera right there. And on four, you get the computer, the screenshot. So I can, if I want, just do uh, live streaming and I can pretty much, you know, use it as a instantaneous video studio. So I'm literally cutting cameras as I go. Or I can just record multi-track and edit it later. So that's the system. Of course, in order to be consistent with the lighting, I have studied a position uh, for my lights. One is there, one is there, and one is there. Now, of course, this room is big, yeah? You see it? So I have quite a bit of light. Um, however, <laughs> often on the videos, I start in the morning and then I end up late at night. So even if there is light outside, I always keep the lights on so that I, you know, even if I don't notice that there's not, not light anymore, you guys can still see what I'm doing. <laughs> this is gonna be a long video. Is that too long? Hit like if you're excited about long videos. All right, let me have some coffee. I love coffee. Mmm. I am a keeper, apparently. Right, so what else is on this table? This is my looper. This is ideal to put down ideas quickly. This is Machine. I love Machine. Great for drum kits and, you know, programming things. I love it. Here I got my radio. It's a Tivoli Audio. I love this Tivoli Audio. I have it on uh, Classic FM. Just because, you know, sometimes when I work and I'm doing, you know, more like, I don't know, programming work or, you know, admin work or things like that, I like to have just 
you know, instrumental music in the back. So that's what I do. Then here we've got um, the Discrete 4 by Antelope Audio. This is a very, very good interface that I like to use with my laptop. It's got this um, very fast Thunderbolt connection and it allows me to use the um, DSP capabilities that are inside of it. Because of course, you know, this is just my laptop, not very powerful, but with this power, it becomes really, really good. And uh, below here, my MC707 by Roland. This has become my favorite drum machine uh, because um, it's self-contained. I can take it to gigs. Uh, I can put my favorite sounds in it. It's got looper tracks. It's got uh, drum tracks. It's a great synthesizer, all in one. I really love it. And also, I use it in conjunction with this guys, right? So how do I do it? I have this multi-clock, yeah? The multi-clock basically allows me to take a, um, a signal, like a, like a clock, and then I can distribute it to my old gear, as well as the new gear. It's great, you should check that out, the multi-clock. And um, of course here I got my 808, my 909, and uh, this is my Chorus Echo SRE555. I don't think that there is a delay, tape delay, that sounds better than this. I really love it, actually. Let me demonstrate that it's always on. Check out. Isn't that beautiful? Wait, 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 check out. Incredible, right? All right, speaking of tape, I, of course, have this Studer Master Recorder A80 quarter inch. I love this machine. I keep it in pristine conditions because I want it to sound as good as possible all the time. I just got this serviced literally two days ago by Clive Cavan. There's a great video where I showed the work of Clive Cavan. He's one of the greatest tape engineers in London. He's built the studio of Lenny Kravis. He's, he's, he's an incredible man. And uh, check out that video if you haven't. So this area is done. Let's go to this area. Now this is my Yamaha Yax piano behind this thing. So basically what happens is that I'm not using this rig as much as I would like to because it's a little bit, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm outgrowing this place. So it's not exactly ideal to sit behind, but the concept is that basically I can play the piano, but also I can have this keyboards and sometimes I would use a looper, sometimes I use the APC40 with my Ableton Live and I'm able to pretty much build grooves on the, on, on the, on the go. And this is, this is like more for a composition um, use. So I've got a TR8 by Roland, the Yamaha CP Refay series, the Micro Freak, the Micro Freak is awesome. And uh, this is an old PSS9. You might, some of you guys may remember it from my video Simpsons vs. Star Trek uh, that I did with my Monica <laughs> Culture Killer back 13 years ago. It's my, it's my first viral video. I'm, I'm gonna link it in the description. And uh, here I've got a Yamaha CS, a uh, Reface series. I love this one. This synth sounds really great and it's a great choice for beginners because you know you can learn about a DSR, everything is very simple and it sounds great. Got some uh, bits and bobs here of percussion. Uh, on top of the piano, I have my silver button for 100,000 subscribers that I got, I don't know, some, some years back, a couple, of, I think uh, one year and a half ago, something like that. And these are, <laughs> basically these I got in Mexico. This, this is one for every year that I go to this festival called Mi Casa Holiday. It's a great festival of house music and deep house and uh, you know, all things soulful. And uh, every time I play, I 
get one of these back and I love them. This is a mug Etherway. It's a theremin. Yeah, you get it? And this one is signed by Bob, Bob Mogg himself. How rare is that? This is my iPad. I actually don't make a lot of use for this. You can see there's so, so much dust. And this is my um, Italian pride. <laughs> this is, this, oh, telephone. I always get telephone calls in the middle of making videos. Dr. Mixello. What? Somebody was shy. <laughs> I was saying, this is my San Ramos award. Basically, I did this big festival in San Remo in Italy a long time ago. This means that basically I ranked second uh, with my project called Erme Passavanti. Very proud of that one. And um, back here, <laughs> am I going to, look, you know, I'm gonna do a long video. If you don't like it, you can still skip it or jump it. But you know, today I'm gonna show you everything about my studio. So. This is where I keep all my cables, all of the stuff, yeah? I've got the idea from Casey Neistat, basically. So I like his red boxes that he used to have. I decided to have them wood and just put um, some red tape saying what, what it is. So I've got from, uh, you know, adapters. So whenever I need an adapter, here's where I look. Um, this is RCA cables. Right now I'm using most of them. These are MIDI cables, yeah. Uh, these are USB cables. I've got XLR cables, jack-to-jack -jack cables. Look, it may, it may sound funny, but uh, having your cables and all your bits and bobs well organized is a life changer because you have access to everything you need and you know where everything is. And of course, we produce a lot of videos here and a lot of music, so I gotta be ready. So now, this is the back of the studio, and uh, you can see, yeah? So here's where I got my collection of records. It's a small collection, I don't have many records because I've distilled them over the years. And uh, I like to play vinyl a lot, and uh, you know. This is what I do, you know, if, if, if I want to chill out and uh, do some admin work, that's what I use. I've got another one here, which I use a little bit less, so it's covered. This is a Commodore 64, and uh, this is that TV that looks like a space helmet. <laughs> You've seen it sometimes in my videos. It's quite cool, I like it. And yeah, you know, here is the back of the computer table. As you can see, I use this Manfrotto arms, magic arms, because of course, you know, everything needs to be in the right position, and these arms allow me to do just that. That's a uh, Fender Jazz 1994 Japan, and that's a cheap Yamaha Pacifica. Let me go closer so you can see it. Bass, guitar. This is a recording sign, which, you know, it's a little bit for beauty, but, you know, lets people know that I am recording. So um, uh, what's cool about this is that you can go, Alexa, turn recording off. Alexa, turn recording on. Hee <laughs> hee. This is the end of Studio A. Do you want to see Studio B? Yeah? Hit like. Yes, let's do it. All right, so this is how we go to Studio B. This is the second largest. I've got a lot more panels. This is a lot better treated in terms of sound because this is the mixing and the mastering room. Let me show you. So that's the desk. Of course, it's very ergonomic. We use Aaron chairs because these are the most comfortable. And uh, of course, everything is designed in a way that you can reach everything at an arm's length. So, uh, what have we got here? This is a D5 digital master recorder, that. This is for old tapes, sometimes we have to remaster uh, catalog stuff and they ask us to do this. Uh, this is the Tegler Audio Manufacturer Cram and it's a compressor equalizer, very nice. It's a valve uh, unit and it sounds awesome. 
This is the Shadow Hills Mastering Compressor. Of course, this is Daddy. Let me turn it on. Bang. Of course, it looks and sounds incredible, as you can imagine. Back here, we've got the Orion HD by Antelope Audio, and this is a 32-channel audio interface. This sounds incredible. And the Satori, this is a um, monitor controller. You can select monitors, you can select the volume here, and it also works as a summing mixer. Below here, I've got the TC Electronic Finalizer. We still use it every now and then. This is the Tegla Audio Manufacturer Connector. I will show you what this does. Basically, this is our mastering chain, yeah? When you turn it on, basically, you can decide what piece of gear in which combination. You know, you can have, like, for example, this first and that after, or the other way around. It's just brilliant. It's a brilliant system. And here's an um, Italian uh, VDL preamplifier. This sounds really awesome. And back here is the power supply for the Shadow Hills. Of course, we have a computer. It's another PC. This is the oldest of them all and uh, we renew it every you know, couple of years. We change the processor, we add RAM. It's been running fantastic for a long time. Right here we have the remote for the Satori, which is the monitor controller, and of course a choice of uh, Yamaha NS10 and PSI Audio. This setup, the way it is, we have changed so many times. Right now, this is our favorite solution. This is what we think sounds best in this room and for our taste. Uh, right here, there is a valve compressor, which is the Phoenix Mastering Plus by Thermionic Culture. This sounds like a dream. It's incredible. And this is the SSL. So if you want something more like a little bit more rock and roll, then we would use this. This is for a more acoustic material, you know, classical uh, acoustic jazz. That's great. Everything else is just the Shadow Hills, you know, that sounds incredible. And uh, here is the mixer. Oh, it's a summing mixer. So it takes 14 channels. It's a Thermionic Culture Fat Bastard uh, Mark II. It's incredible and it's got this attitude control, which means it will saturate the valves. It will uh, produce an incredibly nice sound. Right here, there is the Sonic Maximizer. Let me switch this on, All right? So that's the BBE. This is the Neve compressor, the 33609, which sounds incredibly buttery and great. This is the, um, is it on? Yes, of course it's on. This is Stam Audio 76, the Stam Audio LA2A. They sound incredible. I really like them. And this is the GML compressor. This is probably the most transparent compressor that we've got. Uh, and it's great for piano, for strings and for acoustic material again. And these are the two distressors, which we use uh, a lot. Of course, they are paired. Every time we service them, we make sure that they sound exactly the same. And down here, we have the amp for the NS10s and a Tascam 122 MK3. This is the best tape recorder that's ever been built. It's also the last one. <laughs> it's got XLR inputs and outputs. All right. Oh, by the way, I've got a Phantom 6 there that I didn't have time to open yet. And now, in the same room on the opposite side, we have the video production table. So basically, here we have another computer. This now is called Elvis. And this is pretty powerful. Um, it was definitely super powerful when we got it. Very simple setup. We've got this audio fuse here. We use the EVE audio. Uh, which are very good monitors. Sometimes we, you know, we, we may use them for mixing and mastering, but recently we just like to use them here because of course we have to mix and master here. You know, the, the videos that we make always get a, you know, mixing treatment. Of course, it's Dr. Mix, what do you expect? And right here is where we keep the um, camera batteries and the day-to-day -day cameras. We don't use fancy cameras. Basically, most of the channel was built on this one. This is a Canon G7X. 
This is a Mark One. I'm using right now a Mark Two. In this one that I'm holding in my hands is Mark Two. I want to buy the Mark Three, but maybe later. And this is where I keep all my good clothes, right? When I have to do videos, I have my good clothes here. Because <laughs> the truth is that if I'm not on video, I dress like a bum. <laughs> the last room, Studio C. We have a lot of stuff in Studio C as well. So Studio C is mainly used for uh, production. Of course, there are a lot of synthesizers. <laughs> this is where I learn how to play um, synths, <laughs> keyboards. It's a Bon Tempe from the 70s. It's basically like a motorized uh, melodica. Um, I don't have the courage to connect it because I don't want it to blow up, but sometimes I will repair it. Right here we have a whole bunch of keyboards. Uh, let's start from the top. Nord Electro 2. This was my go-to for live back a few years ago. This is the Roland Jupiter XM. I love the Jupiter XM. This is the CR8000. This is basically between the CR78 and the 808. This is the missing link and it sounds incredible. Uh, it, it has some great tom sounds and uh, I like it for house music a lot. Back here we have an Access um, Virus T1. This was actually gifted to me by Michael at uh, ReFX, the guys who make Nexus. He was just so cool, he just gifted it to me. I, I love you, Michael. <laughs> and this is a Univox SR95, which is another way they used to call the Korg Mini Pops 7. This is the drum machine that you would hear on Oxygen 4 by Jean-Michel Jarre. It's broken, I need to repair it, I will repair it soon. This is my first synthesizer. So basically my dad bought this to me for my 14th birthday. It was an Italian synthesizer. I mean, you have to imagine I was 14, so what was it, uh, 1984. So at, at that time you already had, you know, some pretty significant synthesizers out there, but this was Italian, it was cheap and uh, it sounded okay but I've learned everything here, you know, attack, decay, sustain, release. I played with this for hours and hours and hours a day and uh, that's where I learned how to use synthesizers. This is the Matrix Brute by Arturia. This sounds incredible. It's like a three oscillator uh, synthesizer. You can use it in paraphonic mode and it's got this matrix system where you can really shape the sound. Down here we've got um, the uh, Studio Logic uh, Sledge, which is an Italian keyboard uh, powered by Waldorf, right there. This is a pretty cool keyboard. It's got very good wavetable sounds. For that, this is great. Down here is a Arturia Key Lab. This is one of my go-tos when I have to program, you know, using virtual synthesizers, plugins. This is what I like to use because it's got loads of controls. Back here, there is a um, Studio Logic Master Keyboard, weighted one. This is for when I have to record pianos like sounds and I need something weighted. This is what I use. And back here, there is a Tractor Control S4. I use this a little bit less because I'm not much of a scratcher. You know, it's got those plates that you can spin around. Um, I'm not very good with those. I rather use my S5, which I cannot show you right now, but the S5 is good. I love it. Here's Complete Control. This is very, very good keyboard. And this is the main computer. This is the most powerful computer we have because, of course, you know, most of the production is done here. We just need a lot of power because, you know, sometimes you run this uh, libraries, you know, strings and those things are heavy. Uh, so you need a lot of power, you need a lot of memory. This computer, which comes, this is the Dr. Mix scan computers. Uh, model uh, which uh, have been custom made just for us. If you just Google Dr. Mix PC scan, you will get to the model that, right this one. On the left, there is the montage. We gave it a face mask. 
because of the coronavirus, just to keep it safe. Uh, this is Montage 6. I mean, I cannot begin to tell you how good this keyboard is. I have this one and I've al I also have the Modi X, which is in there. This I use for uh, my live gigs. It's a lot lighter than the Montage. This thing sounds incredible. They can do AWM, they can do uh, subtractive FM, and they do it so well. They can take samples, uh, no limits with your polyphony. This thing is great. Back here we've got a Mini Brute 2, which sounds really, really cool. This is a Yamaha Reface DX. It's like a DX7, basically. And uh, back here we got the Arturia drum machine, the Drum Brute the limited edition one. And back here we got the small one, the Drum Brute Impact. Right. Here we got a few synths. Yeah, you know. <laughs> So many simps, and uh, finally, I, w I introduce you to Jeffrey. This is the oldest computer we've got, probably. We maxed it out, and we use it more or less for admin things, you know, managing the server and things like that. Uh, this is for shipping. When we ship stuff, we measure it on this. And um, what is there left to say? Um, oh, yeah, up there. And up there is storage. I don't even know what's in that storage anymore. <laughs> no, I, I, do, I do know exactly. There is a lot of stuff. All the stuff that basically I cannot fit, including, you know, the boxes for the gear. I tend not to destroy the boxes because you, know, you never know you need to move. You, you know, sometimes you get new studios and uh, you may need them. What else is here? Oh. This is to make sure that I look right, <laughs> which is never. And, um, oh, we got fruit, fruit. You should always eat fruit. Fruit is good for you. Coffee machine, Nespresso is the way I go. Of course, red, I love it. I love Nespresso. It's a bit wasteful, I give it to you, but uh, not many people drink coffee in the studio and uh, I, I like it. This doesn't make me <laughs> miss Italian coffee. Got a audio hub here. Yeah. I know that I'm forgetting some... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a couple of more things. This is my bag when I travel. This is my YouTuber bag. And I'm gonna make like a, a whole video just about this. This basically I can take it up and take that up and uh, I can go. I have this one, <laughs> which is, all right. Now you're gonna really make fun of me, but this is how anal retentive I am. Check out, <laughs> check out what this is. This is a case for my hats so that they don't get battered. Yeah, I do that, I do that. I admit, shamelessly, the only other thing that I have forgotten to mention is the back of this table. In the back of this table, I've got a lot more cables. Uh, I've got all of the power supplies and a collection of old hard drives. <sighs> it was a long video, wasn't it? But I think it was worth because I've got so many questions about it. And uh, now I think you don't have any questions anymore because I've made like a nine hours video about it. <sighs> all right, well, listen, all I want to say is please be safe, all right? This coronavirus is uh, making us all uh, freak out. Please uh, wash your hands, behave um, responsibly. Just follow, you know, good good source of information. Don't trust everything that you see on uh, online. I personally get my information from the NHS because I live in London in the UK. The NHS website is the best source of information. Also, BBC is a great source of information. I, I you know, my heart goes to my Italian friends and my family and uh, all the people who are, you know, going through some really hard times. And um, I hope this will all be over soon. In the meantime, let's, you know, since we have to be home, you know, let's take advantage, make some music. 
and feel inspired and love one another. All right? Bye, guys. Love you.